I wanted just to talk about growth on an Amazon style retail site. Amazon's been seeing a lot of traction um, by creating customer loyalty programs. Do you have any plans to launch a customer loyalty program or add a layer of content to Mum's World to build your user base? Customer uh, loyalty programs have obviously uh, pros and cons. Um, at the end of the day, um, there are two ways to acquire customers. You either buy loyalty or you earn loyalty. Um, at this stage in the life cycle of Mom's World, we're trying to earn that loyalty. So while never say never, and while loyalty programs are important and they do have their value, um, not in the immediate future. Now, we are particularly fortunate in that our target audience is by their very nature a loyal consumer. Earlier I shared some Nielsen stats about when they buy. Um, of the first time mothers who buy during that window of opportunity that I talked about, 72% of the products purchased actually stay with the mother for at least two years. So as a brand, if we're able to reach that consumer during that window of opportunity, we essentially have a loyal consumer for an extended period of time, obviously um, assuming that we're delivering on the promise of superior customer service. Also, I will say integral to our particular proposition is building a relationship, a one-on-one -on -one relationship with our customer. We have a blog section that essentially educates and we have online dialogue with our customers on a daily basis where we educate, empower and get to know our consumers and this is really one of the things that differentiates the Mums World e-commerce platform and makes it perhaps a bit easier for us than a more mass e-commerce playing field. Is cash on delivery an issue for you? Um, cash on delivery is not an issue for us. We actually like cash on delivery, obviously, because it doesn't come with any fees or, or, uh, or costs associated. Again, when a mother is researching, comparing, and going out of her way to buy products, she is not likely to return it. Our return rates and cancellation rates are actually very, very low. Since we've launched, we've had only two cash on delivery non-payments. Okay. Um, I each, have to talk here. You have to talk. Yeah. So <laughs> cash on delivery is actually about? one of the biggest issues. Again, um, I mean, I have to disagree with, uh, with Muna for, for a little bit. Um, <clears throat> we see it as an opportunity, but think of this. You buy a product up front for $1,000 or however much, and then you have to ship it to your customer somewhere in Saudi Arabia, which takes about, on average, with Aramex, three to seven days, depending on how fast the customer answers. So that's seven days. Aramex has to collect the money and then credit your bank account. Yani, you have a cash flow cycle of around 14 to 21 days. If you ask me today, if you say, Ahmed, I want you to do $15 million in June in revenues, I'm going to ask you for $10 million up front because I have to finance my growth. Every single time there's a cash on delivery order, I'm bleeding this money, and I'm not getting this money back for another three, three weeks to a month. And that's working with our financial team, which is a world-class financial team. Uh, imagine if just a couple of entrepreneurs who are just entering into this market having to solve the COD issue. It's definitely, definitely an issue. And if you're not properly funded from the beginning, uh, you will not overcome it. So I, I would let go of any emotions with regards to how much of a stake I control in Marca VIP, uh, because at the end of the day, you have to, you have to get well-funded and you have to dilute in order for you to build a great company. So I would rather have a 1% stake in Mercedes-Benz rather than, than Dukkanit Abu Ali somewhere in, in, in the Balad. Um, just to add to that, Kabon.com actually offers a cash and delivery service in every city we operate in. And uh, what's unique about the model, it's actually our most cost-efficient model compared to the payment gateways, which doesn't really make any sense. Um, but overall, we found that it was a great way to build trust when we enter new markets, because users will purchase through cash and delivery at the beginning and then transition to a credit card method. So we found cash and delivery quite good, particularly in the couponing business.
Can I, sorry, I'd like to add um, an important element on logistics in e-commerce and how it uh, relates to cash on delivery. Um, when you're competing in the e-commerce arena, it's very important that you have a very tight control over your logistics process. The minute you begin to outsource anything, whether it is shipping, delivery, anything, is when you begin to lose control. The region is still less sophisticated when it comes to, if you like, delegating responsibility to do certain things. Um, what that means for us in particular is for Saudi Arabia and the UAE, our two largest market, we have actually taken on a large percentage of our deliveries in these two local markets. We have actually mirror replicated our UAE operations in Saudi Arabia, which allows us to deliver our products to the consumer within two to three days of order. So a cash on delivery for us, two to three days later, getting the cash in our hands at no cost is actually great. Now certainly, um, as the brand continues to grow exponentially and as you scale, you cannot do it all alone. But at that point, the, the, the logistics arena in this part of the world needs to catch up and needs to become much more sophisticated. Let's talk about funding. All four of you took on funding within the first eight months of launch, essentially, with MUNA closing around right now. Why was it essential to take on so much funding so early? And how should startups think about approaching funding once they launch e-commerce startups? Well, first of all, in order to get funding, you have to have the proper market, right? There has to be a market that's ready for, for your startup and for your idea, and you have to convince, of course, the investors of this dream. Uh, for us, it was very difficult. I mean, as I mentioned during my ArabNet presentation, half of the Arab investors laughed at me and the other half just didn't follow up at all. Uh, so part of the strategy was to go out to uh, Europe and, and reach out to our connections in, in the Valley as well and get properly funded. And from the beginning, we knew that, I mean, we're entrepreneurs, right? In our mind, it's already done. We're already a billion dollar company. We're just acting things out right now. Uh, so you have to go in with this kind of invasion style uh, black ops mode into the market and you need funding for that and you need proper funding for that what what we did though is that we had I hope none of my investors are here we had the divide and conquer strategy right we did not want to have a single investor or a single company or a single person have a, 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 a controlling stake if you will in the company this is so that we the entrepreneurs will always be in the driving seat and we don't leave everything up to a single person who may not know nothing about this market uh, 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 to, make, to make big decisions for the company. So funding is, uh, is very important, but more, more importantly are the investors that you bring on board. I mean, we have Invus, which is a $4 billion fund out of New York. We've got Lumia Capital. We have Hummingbird Ventures. And by the way, Hummingbird Ventures were the first company to invest in Marca VIP. They pumped in $500,000, and they invested at our last round, the $10 million round. They invested in every single round since day one. And that's the kind of investors that you want to have on board, the ones that believe in, in, in you and believe in your dream and are very active also to make sure that you, uh, you succeed. Um, again, the, 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 the only uh, advice for the entrepreneurs is not to be dilution sensitive and not to be valuation sensitive. In the beginning, you need to prove that you have a serious market and that you have the appetite and, and, and you can sell. And after that, you can dictate the relationship with the investors and with the suppliers.